Welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how you can easily set up a monitor for your AI agent application. We will use therefore Langfuse, an open source LM monitor application. Uh, but before we do this, we will have a really quick look on open telemetry to actually then understand what is going on. And the best part is that we set up this whole thing locally on our machine with the help of Docker. So let's get started. mentioned in the intro of this video we will first need to have a look on open telemetry so what is open telemetry let's have a closer look on the formal definition open telemetry is a collection of apis sdks and tools use it to instrument generate collect and export telemetry data so metrics logs and traces to help you analyze your software performance and behavior and open telemetry is generally available across several languages and is suitable for production use so open telemetry is an open standard in a distributed system to yeah, collect anything that is going on and then also make it available to you so that you have an understanding what is going on in the dist distributed system. And for example, so what is a distributed system? This could be a cloud native application where you deploy multiple things that then collaborate with each other. So we have their different units of works. Okay, so let me visualize this. Here we have maybe one kind of work, then we have here something else. And this is an op telemetry called a span. So a span is a unit of work. And these spans are then also connected with each other with a span context. So to actually then combine these, have the information together. And this whole thing then together is called a trace. And a trace is the whole request from the beginning to the very end. And in the context of an LM application, this is a trace is from the beginning where you actually enter your prompt till the very end result. And why do I tell you this? Because later in code, we will use these terms like spans and trace, and therefore it's helpful to know them. And at the end, so when we are collecting these spans, we have then here, uh, here we have here the span processor. So here we can actually then modify and yeah, deal with the information inside of the spans to further work with them. And what we're done doing is, so this span processor is then later giving the collected spans to the exporter and the exporter then will yeah, wrap up the data to bring it in the open telemetry standard data format and then send it over to your open telemetry provider and in our case this is then Langfuse and here in Langfuse the data is then getting sent there and they do their magic to further work with the data and then also visualize it for us. So remember, we have here different spans. A span is a unit of work. When we combine multiple spans, then we have the trace to ca capture the whole life cycle of one request. Then the, all the multiple spans are getting processed with the help of the span processor, where we can further edit the information inside the spans. And actually there's something also important to know here. Here we can have the simple span processor. This is good for debugging, where we then actually take every span solo and then work with it. But this is not good for production where we have a high load, for example, there we should then use the batch where we combine multiple spans together and processes them. And then we have then here our exporter to send the data to Langfuse. Now that we have a basic understanding about open telemetry, it's time to set up Langfuse, so our open telemetry provider, and we will do this completely locally. So make sure you have Docker and Docker Compose installed. If you don't have Docker, please install it here. This is the website, just grab it. And then also you need here Docker Compose that you can easily install it with Brew if you are Mac. And now let's go over here to livefuse.com slash self minus hosting slash local. And here this is a great 
tutorial provided by Langfuse to how to set it up locally. So what we will use is the Docker Compose file from there. And the Docker Compose is a plugin for Docker where you can define how multiple Docker containers should collaborate with each other. And this makes it then very easy to spin up different services. So let's start by first cloning the Langfuse repository because in there is the Docker Compose file that we need. So let's move over to your favorite terminal. Where is mine here? Good clone. Damn it. So. And now I am also need to make sure that my Docker is also up and running. So, okay. And if you are Mac, you should see here on the top bar that Docker desktop is then running. So, and what I can also recommend you as a plugin if you're working with VS Code is the Docker plugin because in here we can see then all our images, uh, reg registries and also running containers in a very nice way. And we can also then, if I click here, see the logs, inspect, start and then also remove it. So a very useful extension here if you are constantly working with Docker. So now that we have cloned the repository, we need to navigate into this folder and then run the docker compose up command. This is then the command to invoke the docker compose yaml file. This one here where you can see there are a lot of services and this command will then start it. So let's do this. We go here into line views and then we start docker compose up. And now I need to allow this. And we are seeing here the different services that are getting used by Langfuse. So we have ClickHouse, Minio, Langfuse Web, Redis, and the Langfuse Worker. And then if I have a go here to my extension, we should then also see this containers after a while once they are set up. Okay, we see now that all containers are up and running. And what we now need to do is to head over to Langfuse Web. And there we will need to create an account. And at the end of it, we get back the API key that we need in order to authenticate ourselves. So let's hover over here to our browser. And there we type in localhost 3000. Then you need to sign up an account. I've already done that. And then you're also getting to the wizard where you also need to set up an organization. So let's do this together here. Let's say Langfuse JT tutorial. Tutorial. Here we can also then invite some members that also then have access to the dashboard. Then we need to give it a project name. Let's call this one Langfuse with small agents. And then we have here the setup tracing guide. So in here we get the secret key starting with SK, the public key starting with PK, the host, and also some example code for the setup for LangChain, for example, JavaScript version of LangChain, Lama index, and so on. But what's important for you is to actually these three here. So make sure that you copy them over, starting here with the secret key. And then we are going over here to the third part. So with this information, we now to instrument your agent. So in order to authenticate, we need then provide the secret key and the public key. And from there, we combine these two and encode them then in base 64 that we then also, so you can see it here, we have the public key, secret key. We um, make them into a base 64 encoding. Later on, we then use this here in the authorization basic. So here we need to set the variable Hotel exporter OTB headers. Okay, so this is a basic authorization where we then provide here the authentication key. And then also we need to specify where we want to set send the data. And this is done here with this environmental variable, the hotel exporter OTLP endpoint, pointing to this direction. So localhost 3000 API public hotel because we are here locally, right? But if you are using the managed version of Langfuse, you should then of course can use the EU cloud Langfuse.com API public hotel 
or if you are using the US region, you just can simply change the prefix to US and then you're good to go. So these are now the configurations we need to set up in order to authenticate ourselves and also where to send the data, okay? So now comes the interesting part. I've already told you this that we need it because now we are importing from the small agents library, the small agents instrumenter. And then also from open telemetry, we import the OTLP span exporter, the trace provider and the simple span processor. So after we've done here the first part, we in the second part, we're now setting up the open telemetry instrumentation. So first, what we need to do is to create a new instance of the trace provider. And there we add a spam processor. Now for this little demo, I'm using a simple spam processor. But remember, you should then also use the batch spam processor if you're going for production. And then there we then specify the exporter. So how at the end we would like then to send the data. And then after all, we wrap all this together and then simply pass it over here to our small agents instrument or so. This automatically wraps all the relevant small agent methods to track the execution. And here we are using then the instrument function where we then provide our config, our trace provider object. And that's basically all you need to do. So you don't need to explicitly make some logging statements here um, this is not needed so if you have a good ai agent framework library they should provide something like this a one-liner and then the instrumentation is done so let me show you how this then works so we will now execute this agent and i'm making sure that i'm skipping this because we have done this Okay, the agent is now starting. So basically we are using here our MCP server where we then have the query, please find a remedy for hangover, only use the PubMed MCP. I've also done another YouTube video for how to use MCP and small agents. And now it's actually the first time for me to use no lang fuse with this specific agent. So I'm now again go over here to the web dashboard to see if we already got some information there. No, I guess we need to wait. Okay, so our agent finished with the final answer. Yeah, I actually do not understand what this mean, means, but this is not important. But what is important that we now see here our first trace. <laughs> And then if we click here into the tracing and then traces, we can see all the traces. So remember that our trace is the whole life cycle from our prompt that we gave into the very result back from the agent. So if we click in here, we can now all see the different steps, right? And the detailed information that happened here. And yeah, that's now actually all we wanted. How cool is that? completely locally running this and getting better insights not only during development but also later in production thank you for watching and see you in the next one